What is going on guys, this is Dawn here, coming down YouTube, and welcome back to another video, and specifically the second update video of Cascading Data Sheets, a project I started, I think it was two months ago. Yeah guys, so this project was meant as kind of an alternative way of storing data and accessing that data, and it's very, very efficient now, and I've worked on it for so long, past couple of days, I finally got to continue working on this project, and it's really at a stage now where I think it's very, very useful and where I will definitely use this for a lot of my projects as well. Now why? Okay, so simply because I have improved the coding a lot, okay? So you have new classes now and I know I haven't added any sort of methods but basically I've improved the coding so that the performance is now very very great so it's now outstanding really now I can give you a quick example let's say you have a cascading data sheet maybe online maybe locally it doesn't make any difference okay just you know that you need to retrieve it, the online data sheet first but you also need to retrieve the local data sheet as well so uh, it doesn't really make that much of a difference now what you can do, let's say you have 2,000 entries, that's highly unlikely, okay? 2,000 entries in a, in a data sheet, I mean, at some point you would use databases because of course they are way easier to maintain and everything, so um, this is definitely not meant for huge projects which have over 2,000 data sets or something. But let's say you have 2,000 entries, okay? Um, then you can use something called the stopwatch class in the system.diagnostics namespace which basically calculates how long it takes in milliseconds to or just you know seconds maybe um, to get from one method to like the end so basically it calculates how long it takes to call that method and until it's completed so specifically you can you ca could start the stopwatch right here we can stopwatch uh, we can stop the stopwatch right here and then we can basically um, display how long it took in milliseconds that's what we can do so all of these methods, method calls, you can see right here, are basically referring to these attributes. Now I do want to mention that I'm not going to be doing a tutorial today, um, but I will do that in another video because um, I haven't really talked about what you can do with this and how you proper how you can properly use this. But I will definitely do it in another video. Right now, I just want to show you the progress I've made because this is now at 1.0. This is no better anymore. I've tested it for in various applications and it does work. But still, if you can't find any box, then please, please report it uh, using my homepage, okay? So there's the contact form, and then basically just um, compose a back report, and it's going to be fine. Okay, now, <clears throat> as you can see, we have all the different things here. So we got the name, we got the date, we got the location, we got the description, and all of that refers to the datasheet I created, which basically has these events. Now, you will already notice something in here. You can see that right here we have a kind of a new header thingy, which basically says auto increment equals true, and we don't have to specify an ID anymore. That is extremely handy. So what this means is that you no longer have to add the ID attribute manually and then change that ID manually all the time. Now you can let the Cascading Datasheet library do that for you. So it will just automatically create the IDs for you. So this will have ID 1, this will have ID 2, and this will have ID 3. Very, very simple to do. Alright, so this does not require any sort of attribute you have to add in here. And you couldn't do that previously. So I added that in because I felt it was really stupid. Alright, so now as you can see, we've got four attributes. We've got the name of the event, we've got the date, and we've got the location and the description. And as you can see right here, I had some problems with retrieving the values. So basically, it was cutting something from these values. And now it's way way more efficient to retrieve these values because I no longer have to rely on certain let's say I'm, I don't want to talk too in depth about this but uh, I no longer have to rely on certain string occurrences so that's very very handy alright now if you want to retrieve all of that it does require four lines of code because we have four values now this is extremely simple as you can see what I'm doing here simply is because I have this form set up I got this name uh, the state time picker and I'm basically just converting the date which I'm retrieving from the data sheet and I'm basically parsing this as a date time okay so I can use this in the date time picker dot value property that basically means that I just you know display that in a date time format right here which is fairly handy and yeah so that's all I'm doing here now 
you will probably have noticed already that I have two different classes now. So I no longer have one class which has two different constructors, and I have come uh, two different classes. So one online data sheet and one local data sheet. As you can see, I already set up this online data sheet, which refers to a URI. And I have that somewhere in my server. Here we go. Events.txt, and I've done some performance testing, so that's like, I don't know, uh, 300 kilobytes. And I had over 2,000 entries in there, and 2,000 entries to retrieve one entry from the 2,000 entries, even if it's at the very end, it takes 7 milliseconds. Okay, so you can calculate that as well if you want to. The link to the library is in the description. I'm not going to show that right now because it's not an actual result because I'm recording, and that really slows down my computer. While recording, I get, I think, about 30 no, or 20 milliseconds, but please notice that 1000 milliseconds are one second so you will not notice that at all so it retrieves that in a really really fast manner now right away, uh, I also did a performance test with um, retrieving all values so because what you can do you can refer to sheet dot get all values from attribute which basically allows you to retrieve a string array so basically all the values which are in this name right here would be retrieved and I can show you that right now so what it re would retrieve is spring party, Jimmy's birthday, and buy a new car. That's what it is. So I could display that in a message box real quick. And getting all of that in 5,000 entries is taking, I think, around 100 milliseconds, which is one tenth of one second. So you will still not see that. And again, for you wouldn't really use that anymore. You wouldn't. Um, I mean, you would use databases then because it's just way too much and it's way easier to maintain a database than this data sheet, of course. But for smaller projects like, you know, having an event planner right here, or maybe you are an organization, okay? You are in an organization and this organization has set events and members can attend these events and then you basically just have, for 2014, you have, I don't know, 30 events and members can participate in these events or not or attend these events or not and that would be really static so you could use a, a data sheet for that for example okay I'm going to show that and in order to because this is a string array I can't show it on the message box but I can create a string so string dot join and then I have to specify the separator which would be comma and the space and here we go so now that should work. Now we can take a look at that. I'm going to stop this. All right. Now, so retrieve that. Retrieve that online. Now, please, this is now 2,000 entries on there. Okay. So this is going to take a little longer. Now I'm going to get values. And what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's displaying that message box. So that's why. So 2,000 entries. That's not really a great idea. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to be using a local data sheet now because I just have three entries in that. So I'm going to remove this comment here, so I can use the open file dialog. And now all I have to do right here is change the online data sheet and use the local data sheet. And now I'm just going to put local data sheet in here. And now I just need to specify ofd.filename. ofd.filename. Simple as that. So now I'm good to go. Let's save, start the application and go and find events. Oh, this is not a CDS file, I'm sorry. Uh, I can already, I can change the filter if I want to. I'm just going to rename this to .cds right now. Yes, please. Okay. So now I can use that. Start. Okay, here we go. Events.cds. And I can retrieve this. As you can see, Spring Party, Jimmy's birthday, buy a new car. So that's what it does. And here we go. We got the entire entry. And now we can change that. And as you can see, Jimmy's birthday at this place, at his place, let's break everything. Uh, the ID is 2. And it does that automatically. So it's auto incrementing. So yeah, that's really what's going on, guys, here. And that's the little update. Um, so that's really, really handy now. And I will do a tutorial video pretty soon. I'm going to show you how to build a really simple application. Now, I can quickly show you what this application would look like. So I'm just going to change this to new CDS better form. 
because I've built like a little test application. I also have the performance test there, so now I have to open the cascading data sheet, which is now then again a text file. So I'm sorry for that changing that here. Okay, yes, and then let's go back here, start that. Okay, find the events. Here we go. And we can see we have this little test application, so we can get one specific entry, as you can see, very, very fast. And we can get that entry. Now we can also do a performance test. So it takes zero milliseconds because it's just three entries. So you can see it's very, very fast if it just takes three uh, milliseconds. Um, now, getting everything takes also zero milliseconds because it's just three entries, really, it's nothing. But now we can also get all. And you can see we have this little data list, and if you change that, it changes in our CDS better form. So I can show you how to build this little test application. So I will basically explain to you how you can interact with the cascading data sheets. All right, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for the tutorial, guys. And I also want to thank you for 6,000 subscribers, guys. This is absolutely incredible. Thank you so so much for 6,000 subscribers. It's just astonishing, guys. Thank you very very much, guys. So. If you liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up because it really supports me, guys. And yeah, see you in another video.